Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got? Population collapse, pride, yes, prayers, no, contaminated drugs, and mutant monkeys. <laughs> And welcome to Sigma Tiger News, where you come get the hottest, juiciest beef online and like and subscribe so I can take this mask off. 10,000 subs or 10,000 likes, whichever happens first, we're going to remove this mask. So let's dive right in. What do we got today? Population collapse looming in Greece as sudden deaths soar and fertility hits record low. And look, we got a fact check here. Wonderful. Uh, Greece is predicted to become the first nation to suffer population collapse as sudden and unexpected deaths continue soaring across the nation while fertility rates have plunged to levels lower than experts previously thought possible. Good lord. Heart failure, strokes, blood clots, and rapid onset cancers among otherwise healthy young people have caused the mortality rates to skyrocket in Greece, while the fertility, rate, fertility rates in young males and females are caused the birth rate to fall through the floor, recording the lowest number of births in almost a century. The prospect of population collapse in Greece is a ticking time bomb and a national threat, according to Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis. Uh, population collapse, also known as depopulation, refers to the phenomenon of a sudden and irreversible decline in the number of living people in a society. Now Greece, the cradle of Western civilization, is on track to become the first nation to fall victim to multi-pronged depopulation agenda of the global elite, potentially. Uh, this is one of the most serious problems we face not only in Greece but in the EU as a whole, Finance Minister Kostas Hatsidakis told Reuters, referring to the rapidly declining population in his country. It is our priority, whatever it takes. However, the Greek government has not made any reference to the deadly effects of uh, something that rolled out in 2021, despite sudden and unexpected death statistics skyrocketing in perfect synchronization with the rollout. Excess deaths, excess mortality rates are off the charts. Uh, the following data was retrieved by our friends at News Addicts from our One World in Data April 10th, 2020. So as you can see, the death rate in Greece has been falling steadily year uh, on year for decades until something changed in 2021. The death rates exploded. Interesting. Uh, the population growth rate uh, from 2011 to 2021, obviously declining uh, very rapidly. And then we have excess mortality, cumulative number of deaths from all causes compared to the projection of previous years per million people. So there's people, actuaries, okay? They, they work with uh, insurance companies and they have like a 1% to 3% margin where this insurance company will make money. So they calculate this on average, how many deaths will happen. We got a, a margin of this many. And look at this, kaboom, February 20. Uh, 4th, 2021, all the way up until December 31st, 2023. Look at this excess death. Interesting. What could be causing it? Who knows? Excess mortality, cumulative death from all causes compared to production based on the previous years. So it seems to have leveled out a little bit after 2022. I wonder. Interesting. Uh, while experts warn Greece's population may never recover, the mainstream media has begun celebrating depopulation. According to Scientific American, declining populations will ease the pressure. 8 billion people put on the planet where our current model of endless growth and short-term profit sacrifices vulnerable people and the planet's future population decline could help create a future with more opportunity and a healthy biologically rich world according to the un the continent of africa is the only region with growing population the rest of the world has been hit by a fertility crisis that bloomberg claims nobody saw coming so a shrinking planet outside of africa the the drc the us iran uk italy China and South Korea, all just uh, very low. So that is your population growth, 1.6. Except we have been warning the world for years that uh, there is intent on depopulating the world. Many people have talked about it. Bill Gates have come out and said, like, there's too many people on the planet. Uh, the farming is causing uh, a bunch of problems in the climate, which is not necessarily untrue. Uh, agricultural uh, farming is causing a whole bunch of pollution. Many of these products are household names that are promoted on mainstream media and considered perfectly safe by the average consumer. 
All right, so let's just move on from there. We know, we understand people aren't having babies anymore and excess mortality is up. The reason why is heavily debated, uh, but also a mystery. After war cabinet meets, Israeli officials says plan is to keep Iran guessing on the response. So they were going to meet yesterday, but they postponed it till today uh, about the response to Iranian missile strikes. They sent like 6,000 tons of explosives uh, via drone and missile to uh, Israel and got like two cruise missiles through. That's it. I believe they damaged a base and a child was harmed. Uh the reduced war cabinet met over lunch today, an Israeli source tells the Times of Israel to discuss the response to the Iranian missile and drone attack. For now, Israel's thinking that uh, there's no harm in keeping Iran guessing by delaying a potential response. Let them be anxious, says the Israeli source. The response could be within Iran or outside Iran, the source continues. The majority position in the cabinet is that Israelis should respond forcefully to Iran's unprecedented strikes. The U.S. and Europe are begging them not to. So we'll keep you posted on that. We'll probably have an update tomorrow. Uh, early onset cancer. Faster biological aging may be driving rates in younger adults. So what does that mean? People are aging uh, hyper fast? Let's see. Recent studies show the incidence of cancer diagnosed in people under the age of 50, known as early onset cancer, is increasing. The recently released Cancer Statistics in 2024 report the American Cancer Society stated that cervical and collectoral cancer diagnoses have increased in young males and females. Another recent study reported that the early onset incidence of 29 cancers increased by 79% globally between 1990 and 2019, with early onset cancer deaths also rising about 28% during that time. While the data shows early onset cancer is increasing, scientists are not completely sure what's causing the increase. Most agree lifestyle environmental factors are involved, but more research is needed. Absolutely. What are we consuming? What does our environment have in it? Now a new study suggests accelerated biological aging could be driving the development of early onset cancers. The findings, which have yet to be published in a peer-reviewed scientific journal, were presented during the annual meeting of the American Association for Cancer Research, April 5th to 10th. Multiple cancer types are becoming increasingly common among younger adults in the United States and globally. Uh, Rion Tan, MPH, a graduate student of Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis and lead author of the study said in a news release, understanding the factors driving this increase will be key to improve the prevention or early detection of cancers in younger and future generations. Biological aging measured with blood biomarkers. For this study, researchers analyzed the data of more than 148,000 people in the UK Biobank, large data set. Each participant's biological age was calculated from readings of dyne biomarkers in the blood. Albumin, the most common protein in the blood released by the liver. Alkaline phosphatase, a blood enzyme that helps break down proteins. Creatinine, a normal waste product in your body that helps measure how well a person's kidneys are performing. C-reactive protein indicates inflammation in the body. Glucose, the amount of sugar in the blood. Mean corpuscular volume measures the size of red blood cells. Red cell distribution width. Look for abnormalities in the shape and size of red blood cells. White blood cell count measures the number of total white blood cells, which are part of the body's immune system in the blood. And lymphocyte proportion measures the amount of specific type of white blood cells called lymphocytes in the blood. If a study's participants' biological age was higher than their chronological age or their birth age, then researchers consider them to have accelerated aging. And there you have it, faster agingly to early onset cancer risk. So if you have it, any of these things in your body with a higher threshold or higher level, then uh, you, there's a massive increase for early onset cancer. Lung cancer, 42% increase. Gastrointestinal cancer, 22%. And uterine cancer, 36% increase. Researchers also found that accelerated aging was linked to 16% increase of late onset, defined in the study as after age 55, gastrointestinal intestinal cancer, and a 23% heightened risk of late onset uterine cancer. So, uh, if your insides are old, guess what? You're going to be full of disease. And if you don't take care of your body, you're going to get diseased. And that's how it's working. Ding! Light bulbs. So there's a massive increase. Uh, so what's, what's causing it? We don't know. Uh, maybe we'll cover a story tomorrow about uh, gingivitis and cancer. Ooh, the evil gingivitis. All right, Switzerland, two queer youth group leaders accused of sexually exploiting teen boys offering uh, minors BDSM gear. Here's an image of the two individuals and uh, a dog face masked human. All right, anyway, a gay couple who co-founded a Swiss LGBTQIA plus group, ALTS, A-L-T-S, Alternative Living uh, youth organization are being investigated by the public prosecutor after sexually exploiting two teenagers who were in their care. 
The men had created locations for their youth groups with socialwork.lgbt plus for children aged 13 and up in the city of Chur in the municipality of Bukes, Switzerland. While their identities were concealed by the press in Switzerland, Redux is naming the man involved as Holger Nigman and his husband Bjorn. Holger, 42, is alleged to have had sexual contact with two 17-year-olds who sought help for bullying within the organization. Uh, Holger was a board member of the group at the time, while his husband Bjorn was the business manager. The two men are said to have had a three-way sexual relationship with one of the teens, 17-year-old boy, according to a report by Taj Anzeiger. Numerous documents substantiate what happened in the group, including text messages, emails, and voice messages, report Taj Anzeiger, founded in 2020, Social Work LGBT, uh, has received public funding to set up facilities for at-risk youth as young as 13 who believe they're LGBT+. During an investigation into the allegations, local media spoke to 15 people close to the group to check their veracity of the allegations. The majority of those who came forward decided to remain anonymous. One exception is Daniel Huber, a former board member of the association who, with one other board member, reported the couple to public prosecutor Anina, Anina Grobe, co-director of Avenir Social, the professional association for social work in Switzerland. For us, the behavior of the two is a total abuse of power, absolutely, and the young people also felt that way. I brought it up again and again, said Huber, who attended the meetings as a teenager before joining the board in a leadership role. It is important not to look away from such behavior. According to statements from anonymous sources, the Nigemans also took the 17-year-old boy on vacation to Germany with them. Absolute abuse of power. In one public post the teen made on social media, he reveals struggling with the situation. I'm in a toxic, polyamorous relationship, and it's tearing me apart. Holger wanted to be uh, a polyamorous couple, and I said okay, because I was willing to do anything just to be with him, even though I don't even like his husband. There you go. Love, Trist. The uh, teen continued, he's just taking advantage of me, nothing more, and I'm already traumatized by this SHIT. When this is over, I need to get my brain fixed. Yeah, probably before it started, and you went to the wrong place for it. Uh, the relationship caused contrary within the organization. Several board members told Taj and Zyger, it was clear to everyone that this relationship was not possible at all from a professional and moral point of view, but Holger in particular could speak extremely well, said one individual. Bjorn also had a sexual contact with a second underage teenager in counseling room at the club, which was confirmed by the outlet via text message sent from Holger. As conversations surrounding their leadership became more heated, Holger temporarily submitted his resignation as manager six months ago. However, he sent long messages to other group members justifying the couple's sexual activity. In public, child youth work it's common for a long time for youth workers to have sexual contact with young people holger stated until the 1990s foster children in berlin were referred to as pedophiles because only these children could love them okay so here you have uh, obviously someone who's completely mentally ill and trying to justify his uh, mentally ill behavior his later remark referred to the infamous kentler project an experiment authorized and subsidized by the berlin senate which placed foster children in the homes of pedophiles for the explicit purpose of facilitating child sexual abuse the Kentler Project began in 1969 at the time of its termination in 1988. Nearly two decades later, sexologist Helmut Kentler described the project as a complete success in a report he submitted to the Senate. Three days after submitting his resignation, Holger decided he wanted to reverse the decision after an argument within the club's board. Neither he nor Bjorn were removed from the association shortly afterwards. Daniel Huber and another former board member reported the men to St. Gallen Police. Several anonymous individuals who spoke with the press highlighted a sexualized basic atmosphere. Absolutely, because these people are sick. And if you learn anything about the homosexual nature of these people, um, they go to pig parties, they have sex in public washrooms, it's all kinds of madness. Literally, just do a quick Google search, like, uh, or go on uh, whatever forum and just say, like, what what is gay behavior like? What does a typical gay man do on the weekends? You'll be disgusted. All right, the W Path Files, a report exposing dangerously pseudoscientific surgical and hormonal experiments on children, adolescents, and adults. Good lord, what could this be? Advocates of gender affirming care say it's evidence based, but now newly released internal files from the World Professional Association for Transgender Health, W Path, prove that the practice of transgender medicine is neither scientific nor medical. American Medical Association, the Endocrine Society, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and thousands of doctors worldwide rely on W Path. It is considered the leading global authority on gender medicine. And yet, WPATH's internal files, which include written discussions and a video, reveal that its members know they are creating victims and not getting informed consent. Victims include a 10-year-old girl, a 13-year-old developmentally delayed adolescent, and individuals suffering from schizophrenia and other serious mental illness. It has been reported that many of these children who are uh, undergoing gender dysphoria have some level of uh, autism. They're on the spectrum there somehow, somewhere in there. The injuries described in the files include sterilization, loss of sexual function, liver tumors, and death. WPATH members indicate repeatedly 
that they know that many children and their parents don't understand the effects that puberty blockers, hormones, and surgeries will have on their bodies, and yet they continue to perform and advocate for gender medicine because they're terrified to go against the grain and uh, be uh, demo demonized by these individuals. WPATH files prove that gender medicine is compromised, or sort of comprised of unregulated and pseudoscientific experiments on children, adolescents, and vulnerable adults, and will go down as one of the worst medical scandals in history. And the WPATH files can be found by Mia Hughes, if you guys want to dive a little bit deeper into them. Uh, it's absolutely insane. Uh, there is a video available for a download, you can watch it as well. Uh, so one or more people gave me the WPATH files and my colleagues and I attempted to summarize them in a series of articles, we quickly realized the topic was too sensitive, complex, and large to be dealt with as a work of journalism, and we moved the project to a research institute I founded seven years ago, Environmental Progress. So go ahead and look that up. You can go ahead and uh, verify it. The files are authentic. We redacted most names and left only those individuals who are leading gender medicine practitioners to whom we sent right of reply emails. We know WPATH members discussed our emails internally. No WPATH leader or member has denied that the files are anything other than what they appear to be. 70 page report uh, provide context for the 170 pages of WPATH files. Mia Hughes is the author of the report. It and accompanying summaries materials can be downloaded at this link and the link also provides a link to the WPATH um, files there. So I'll go ahead and I'll put that link in the uh, in the description there so you guys can check it out. All right, elementary school denies request to start prayer club, approves pride club. Pride yes, prayer no. So what the deal? 2015 religious freedom seemed compromised when a Washington high school football coach was fired for praying with his team after a game. If you don't remember, uh, he did go to court about that. Uh, he waited outside, waited roughly six years for the Supreme Court to hear the oral arguments for his case. He was represented by a Christian nonprofit legal organization, First Liberty Institute, which took the position that no teacher or coach should lose their job for simply expressing their faith while in public. This was a notable case in 2022, and recent events have caused the issue to resurface. Earlier this year, Laura, an 11-year-old girl who attends Creekside Elementary in Washington State, requested to start an interfaith prayer club at her school, but the request was denied. Okay. They have a decent reason why, basically stating that uh, we do up a budget at the beginning of the year and all clubs must be approved by then. But the story doesn't end there. Laura's group, which she hoped to start with her friend, was meant to include people of different religious backgrounds. She shared with Fox News that she was feeling alone and that she thought this would be a good idea to bring students together. I think this is something that I'm very passionate about and I wouldn't be here if I didn't really want to make this happen. If I didn't think that it would be a great opportunity for everyone. It was later discovered that an LGBT club was approved only a week prior to Laura's club request being denied, which has caused spectators to raise their eyebrows. Of course, as a result of this alleged hypocrisy, Laura filed a lawsuit on the grounds of religious discrimination with the help of First Liberty Institute. Attorneys pointed out in a letter to the school, the First Amendment doubly protects religious speech. The First Amendment protections extend to elementary school students expressing their sincere religious beliefs through voluntary clubs, yet the school district flouted its First Amendment obligation when they refuse to allow a student-led interfaith prayer club. Its unlawful action violates both the free exercise clause and the free speech clause. So there you have it. Uh, sadly, the promotion of LGBT identities is held sacred while religion is sidelined and marginalized. It's heartbreaking that Laura, a fifth grade student, felt alone at school as a religious believer and that she knew other students who felt the same way. She reacted in exactly the right way by making an effort to build community with religious students. And uh, go on to emphasize, oftentimes people seek to prevent religious expression in government venues. They will use the excuse that they don't want to imply that the government favors one religion over the other. However, when it comes to Laura's case, she pointed out the school doesn't even have that flimsy excuse because the students were seeking to start a club that would be open to students of different faiths. Boom. So uh, they denied it because uh, they didn't want it in the school. They're probably offended by it, as many people are offended by this gender ideology thing, especially women having their uh, livelihoods stolen from them in athletics. All right, moving right along, it's non-stop. New York City block transformed into illicit open-air market for migrant criminals and prostitution. So this looks like a third world country. Uh, if you've ever been to Southeast Asia um, and walk down the streets, uh, then you see all this open-air markets. People just line up, put a blanket down. Here's my wares, come and have some. Uh, people walking on the street, massage, you want massage? And you know what that is, that's rub and tug. A uh, stretch of Jackson Heights has become an illegal migrant shopping district with migrant vendors selling stolen goods and sex workers openly operating on the streets. Roosevelt Avenue near 91st Street is overwhelmed with vendors hawking goods stolen from nearby shops and prostitutes propositioning passerbys at all hours. The frustration of local merchants and residents is evident as they feel helpless to address the situation. The police attempt to intervene, but the vendors quickly return once they leave the area, making it difficult to eradicate the problem permanently. Migrant peddlers display stolen merchandise for resale at discounted prices with everyday items like mouthwash, diapers, and 
baby formula spread out on sidewalks. The stolen goods are stored in suitcases and vans parked across the street and are set out for display each morning. Despite the efforts of law enforcement, including the recent closure of some brothels in the area, the illegal activity persists. The soft-on crime laws in place limit what the police can do and release nonviolent offenders back into the streets, contributing to the ongoing criminal behavior along Roosevelt Avenue. So there you have it. Uh, it's all falling apart, and it's all the soft-on crime uh, liberal ideology that, uh, hey, listen, it, everyone can be rehabilitated. You just got to give them a chance. And how many chances do they get? Every single one. And how many recover from their poor behavior? Absolutely zero. Uh, rants. Democrats fight to keep homeless living in unsafe housing. Claims science of drug contamination is unsettled. Contaminated drugs. Let's find out. Democrats are playing a dangerous game of public health by objecting to drug contamination testing in homeless housing. It's baffling stance that could keep addicts in toxic conditions. Why? Because they falsely claim there's no clear evidence that drug contamination is harmful. This head-scratcher of a policy comes as the county uses taxpayer dollars to convert hotels into low-barrier, permanent, supportive housing for the chronically homeless, or uh, unhoused, to be politically correct. What a joke. The uh, Sonohamish County Council Democratic plan is to house the homeless without requiring them to abandon the drugs that cause their homelessness. This approach is rooted in the controversy on failed housing first and harm reduction models, both have proven to be more harmful than anything else. Look at Oregon. Look at British Columbia, Canada. Oregon actually turned around and reversed that, and they're going to bring in uh, mandatory minimum sentences for possession. Boom! There it is. All right, so Republican Councilman Nate Nearing proposed an ordinance to mandate drug contamination testing in the units. It's meant to protect the health of homeless residents in the permanent supportive housing units. After all, meth contamination has already forced the shutdown of four homeless housing properties for decontamination. Nearing sensible ordinance could prevent such crises with early intervention by public health officers, but as expected, the council's most radical Democrats threw a fit. Democratic Council member Storm Strom Peterson led the charge, raising objections based on constitutional issues. He argued that the test results could be made public, violating privacy rights. Could be. Uh, anyway, but also claimed that you might not be able to test individual households. I have some pretty serious reservations, particularly around the testing of somebody's individual residence. I think we can run into some pretty significant constitutional issues, privacy issues. I think also folks that are permanent supportive housing, this is a very challenging population, often with very serious mental health issues. So I think the idea of testing individual residents initially has those barriers. Blah, 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 bull. Uh, so here's the deal. If you're a sport athlete, uh, they'll test you, and it could be random. USADA will come in and knock on your door, phone call, text, say, we're on the way, we're going to test you, or we're here, we're going to test you. It could be all hours a day. And guess what? That's what you have to do when you want to play. You have to pay to play, and that's the price. Same with homeless shelters. You can't be having drugs all up in the gaff. What a joke. And this is the reason why uh, new kinds of synthesized narcotics are hitting the street and they're turning people into extras from a zombie movie. Let's go ahead and check this out. What the heck? So if you've ever seen a possession, which you likely have not, uh, this is exactly what it looks like when someone is completely demonized. Uh, in the time of Jesus Christ, he was constantly casting out evil spirits from people, and this is the way they would behave. Literally like coming out of caves, violently acting upon people. But now they've synthesized the drugs. Uh, I guess it's called the demon drug. I don't know. They're calling them zombies or whatever, but you can see the human there. It's absolutely tragic, uh, very unfortunate for that human being to be going through that. But guess what? It's coming to a street near you, so heads up. And look out, we have a new mutant strain of monkeypox with pandemic potential. Ooh, it's discovered in the Congo village as health officials call for urgent measures to contain it. Well, if you're unaware, uh, mpox in the United States, as it was uh, dubbed last year, the year before, because uh, it was basically uh, a gay disease and people didn't want to uh, associate it with homosexuality, but like 90% of the people who were contracting it were of the homosexual nature. Yeah, we covered it a bunch of times. Check it out. The virus is a descendant of the deadlier clad one mpox strain, and, but has evolved to become even more infectious and better at evading tests than its predecessor. The concerning discovery was made in uh, Kamatuga, poorly poor densely populated gold mining town that's feared to be ripe for an explosive outbreak. 
So far, there have been 108 cases. Researchers who detailed the virus in preprint have called for urgent measures to contain the virus and avoid a global outbreak. Without intervention, the localized Kamatuga outbreak harbors the potential to spread nationally and internationally, the authors wrote. Given the recent history of MPOX outbreaks in the DRC, we advocate for swift action by endemic countries and the international community to avert another global MPOX outbreak. Yeah. It's highly mobile. Miners and sex workers frequently travel to and from the town for work from neighboring countries like Rwanda and Burundi. So they're afraid that people are going to come and uh, have a bunch of gay sex or regular sex and then go ahead and pass it around to all the people they have sex with in their hometowns. Local healthcare infrastructure is ill-equipped to handle a large-scale epidemic. MPOX caused an international epidemic in 2022 when it spread to more than 100 countries and killed hundreds of people, including 58 Americans. That outbreak was caused by a more mild clad 2 strain, which is rarely fatal. The outbreak that worried health officials then was primarily concentrated within the gay and bisexual male community. It's not clear whether the genesis of the outbreak in the DRC was driven by sexual contact. Seems so. We'll see. For the past year, the DRC has been struggling to contain the deadlier version of the virus known as CLAD-1, which kills up to 10% of those affected. Man, I'm getting ding-donged over here. What is happening? I'm going to have to shut that down. Good lord. All right. Uh, yeah, so just moving on. Uh, 108 cases. It is emerging. So heads up on the monkeypox, especially if you're a homosexual. Uh, nothing good can come from this. Asking an AI robot if it can design itself. Let's see, because AI is on the rise. AI within, embedded into robots, is the future. And if you don't believe it, check it out. Yeah, Skynet. Go ahead and uh, check out Terminator 2 if you don't know what I'm talking about. All right, like and subscribe. What an episode. Good Lord. Uh, pray for your soul and the uh, souls of all the uh, people who are going to die of cancer and monkeypox. My God. Sigma Tiger, signing out. <laughs>